I'm looking at um, uh, the aspect of love that you mentioned in your book here, Unconditional Love is Appreciating Aspects of Life. Um, honesty. Now, honesty uh, for me is, is a really big one and uh, I'd love to hear what you've got to say about this because some time ago, uh, in fact it's now, it's now 20 years ago, uh, I, uh, I was on the receiving end of a channeled message uh, from a healing group, a spiritual healing group upstairs. And the first three words of this message uh, were written in capital letters and they were honesty, honesty, honesty and each one had an exc exclamation mark at the end of it and I thought what's all this about? You know, am I, am I not being honest? Am I being dishonest? I had no idea that honesty was, was, was a major issue for me. Um, and it's really it's it, it ha it's it's something that's persisted in a way. You know, I kind of got the idea that it was all about being honest about what's going on for me, you know, who I am, or uh, I mean, even now you can see from the way that I'm faltering about this that I'm not very clear about it. So so I'm keen to know what what you're going to say about it. So what I'll do first of all is to read. The, uh, the, the, the three paragraphs that you've written about honesty and let, let's see what points there are that we can take up here. Honesty. To intimately know ourselves is to be truly honest with our motivation and intent towards all experiences. Such honesty is born of a love for self and a desire to live in freedom from the shadows of illusionary d beliefs. We learn to discern our personal truth from that which we accepted from outer sources. To honestly, 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 this, you're, you're going it like this as well, this is three <laughs> honesties all together. To honestly, honestly, honestly look at ourselves is to become vulnerable with our deepest nature and touch the greater truth we are. Personal growth and evolution are found through the activity of honest contemplation for inner understanding. The core of our being resides in this purest form of our potential. Unconditional love is honesty. Through the love of self, we learn what life is like to be truly honest and intimate with ourselves and others. So. It's a big one, I think. This one is. What, what do you got to say about this? Honestly, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this was obviously, you know, a big one for me because I think when I originally started with, you know, the idea of honesty, there was one, you know, and then the more I delved within myself and more I realized myself in relationship to the life around me, I kind of came to that second level. Oh, honestly, honestly, how do I look at life? Mm -hmm. And then as, you know, I further delved in and inward and outward, it, the third one came up because it really does. And I'm sure there are many more layers of, of honesty. But let's take the first level of honesty in a way. And that's that, you know, we, we often think of honesty in terms of a kind of a moral view of life. What's our moral compass? What, what being honest, we tend to say, well, you know, being honest is telling the truth. You know, we're, if we're going to be somewhere, we'll be there. And if we're not going to be there, we're just going to say, you know, we can't be there. As opposed to making up an excuse and trying to, you know, make ourselves look good or, you know, justify other choices. That kind of moral compass, when rightly looked at, is, is based on a lot of, you know, ideas about ourselves, like the universe and everything. Again, as we've, we've said many times, based on suggestions, based on what other people do, what other people say, what other people teach us, you know, certainly at an early age, other people's perception of honesty, you know, becomes part of our world because that's really how we, we get, you know, knowledge, awareness and experience, you know, as children, we start mimicking things around us. And, you know, honesty can be kind of a spectrum because we can think we're being honest about something, you know, in our day to day, you know, everyday routine. And we might think a little white lie is, you know, maybe not, you know, 
totally dishonest. It's just not necessarily being totally honest. But, you know, we, we become very relative with what we consider honesty. So this first level of honesty, this kind of moral compass, is quite a superficial way of, you know, looking at uh, life. And it, it kind of is based on the constructs of what we learned in childhood and, and how we kind of perceive our relationship to life. The second level of honesty certainly goes deeper and the, the, the when we say honestly honestly you know this is a point where we begin to ask questions you know who am i really am i all these beliefs am i all these traditions am i all these you know things that everybody has taught me and do i really believe in these things these ways or am i simply validating my life justifying my life to fit in to conform to be a part of you know, family relationships, community, work, whatever. So the second level of honesty is when we really begin to start to question, you know, who am I really? You know, who am I? Who, who am I in relationship to what that first level of honesty is kind of like, you know, just kind of a recognition I'm part of a group, I'm part of a community, I'm part of a family, I'm part of, you know, whatever. Um, this, this deeper level really begins to uncover some interesting aspects of ourselves because now we're beginning to say, well, you know, yes, I, I have always thought I, I saw life this particular way. And notice I'm not, I'm not, not making specific definitions or, or, or ideas or concepts because it's really not my responsibility. Because, you know, with so many of us on the planet, there's so many traditions, so many beliefs, so many ways of looking at this. And yet the notion of becoming truly honest with ourselves is universal. So we're looking at this particular quality, this universal quality of honesty that helps us better understand and become and have the experience of unconditional love. So, you know, each person will have to ask themselves them, for themselves, okay, you know, I thought I was this. I thought, you know, being honest meant just doing the right thing at the right time. Well, that is certainly a component. And yet, we're gone, going from this kind of outer look at life to an inner look. Now we need to start asking ourselves, what does my heart say? How do I really perceive life? And, you know, one example might be is, you know, we, we might have, you know, picked up on the idea, you know, kind of became acclimated to this notion that when we, you know, got to a certain age, we would, you know, begin a career of a certain type. More or less, perhaps, because of the, you know, the family collective ideas, you know, things we might have perceived we were good at and then also outwardly looking and say who's successful in this and you know there, there were attractions and we might have you know decided somewhere along the line that we're going to go you know become educated and, and take up a particular type of career but really because of a lot of outer circumstances you know maybe there was the perception that there was greater financial reward by going down that path maybe there's perception of greater prestige going down that path maybe that's what we were felt compelled based on those around us, you know, kind of wanted us to do this, or, you know, the family tradition is everybody else did this. Mm -hmm. Well, what would happen if we were coming more from our heart and say, well, we really genuinely have an affinity to a very different way of, of approaching life. I mean, if we're not considering it based solely upon finance, prestige, or doing what we think we're supposed to be doing for everybody else, or trying to fit into a collective you know, society way of doing it. Now, all of a sudden, we're in a place where there's far greater potential. In other words, we're not so locked into a particular way, and we're not doing things to conform to outer suggestions and experiences. Now, we've just opened up a second layer level of potential, which doesn't that strike us sounding more unlimited, fewer limitations, more potential, fewer limitations, more love? You know, doing less things out of complying, you know, we can even say shame, guilt, you know, there's so many things that cause us to do things um, when we don't really question why we do things or how we do things, which really begs this the second level of question of deeper honesty, who am I really? Well, on the first pass on that second level of honesty, you know, there's going to be a lot of overlap from that first level of honesty. In other words, we're still going to kind of judge ourselves, justify ourselves, place ourselves in circumstances, situations, hold on to beliefs, you know, because it takes a bit of a transition, you know, to make that leap, to begin to say, wait a minute, I think 
I really would like to do this, or I'd like to experience that, or I see life this way rather than that way. And, you know, this particular stage can at times come across to others as being rather rebellious, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we're going against the status quo. We're going, you know, for ourselves, but we're not necessarily complying to the rules, rituals, and traditions, and obligations, and the so-called moral compass, you know, that we've placed ourselves in. Interestingly enough, in this particular level, kind of this mid-level of honesty, we start to realize that a lot of our moral compass was based more on outer uh, ways of looking at life. You know, what is truth? What is honesty? Well, truth and honesty in that kind of superficial level is how do I fit in? Mm -hmm. We go to this next level, it would seem to a lot of people that when we start to question who we are and start to find our own truth, and let that come more to the surface that we're no longer complying that we are not necessarily being honest with ourselves or that we are not necessarily that the fear is that we won't accept responsibility for our lives and therefore the idea is well that level I mean, who am i and i can do anything you know unlimited i can go out and create havoc in the world and it's okay this kind of honesty is heart-centered heart-centered doesn't work that way heart-centered is saying like you know you you might have a, a person might have a a tremendous gift that they've come here to give in this particular lifetime that could affect you know countless numbers of people and yet if we never allow ourselves to explore that gift we never really are able to fulfill that potential so the second one is that kind of the mid place you know where we begin to question and we begin to reveal we say okay you know I kind of see that you know this is my truth going to the third level before Again, you go on to your third level, yeah. Harold, uh, sure. I don't know what it is you're going to be saying, but uh, just going back to um, what you were saying about how can I find out who I who I really am? How can I be honest about who I really am? I mean, I've always always struggled with this uh, to some degree because you know, I, I, perhaps like a lot of people, uh, or even most people, I've got quite a number of different identities within me, quite a number of different personas. Uh, I can be different sorts of people in different circumstances and um, you know sometimes I, uh, there'll be a voice within my head that'll be a bit negative and, and other other times you know very positive and you know very uplifting very spiritual and it's I, I've always found it quite tricky to to, to work out you know, who am I you know where what is my real honest truth who I am, you know, is it that I'm all of these things, or is there a, a kind of a core to that, uh, which, if I if I could identify it and kind of bring it to the fore and perhaps live that that core rather than all the rest of it, that would be being more honest, more myself. When really what you're explaining is that transition from that first level of honesty where we are pretty much, I could almost say, working out a habit, ritual, and quite unconscious about ourselves. We're not really aware of ourselves. We're simply acting and reacting according to a whole variety of belief systems, suggestions, notions, ideas, fitting in, not fitting in. You know, it's really in when we start doing it, we're not necessarily even talking about the rebellious stages of teenage years because in those cases, we're often just rebelling on those first levels. We're beginning to perhaps ask that deeper question. You know, who am I really? Because we aren't necessarily feeling the alignment with all these things that we've been taught. You know, but some people never really move out of that first layer. What you're speaking of is part of the uh, opportunity slash challenge that comes up when you start to begin to question. You kind of start to say, and somewhere in one's life they will, perhaps will start to say, who am I really and do I really believe these things and, and oftentimes it can come based on a certain particular experience like the, the contrast between what we thought was true what we were taught was true is all of a sudden juxtaposed with something that seemingly contradicts that tremendously so much so that the contrast causes us to question and I happen to be one that really believes in questioning reality is a great place to find out more about reality to be locked into a very specific set of rules, regulations, rituals, traditions, beliefs, really limits the fullness of the experience. So honesty being a quality of love and an aspect of love and something that we can further unfold to understand love 
happens when we go from kind of this first to the second level. And absolutely, one of the things that you're, you're suggesting is true. What happens is you start to realize, like, you didn't realize before this that you had lots of personalities. Now you're beginning to realize that you have lots of personalities. What do we do with it? In other words, and as I say personalities, we, we have lots of projections. In this circumstance, we, we strive to be this way. And in that circumstance, we try, strive to be another way. Because in each case, we're trying to fit in. We're trying to be accepted. We're trying to validate our various views. The problem with this, having multiple beliefs, multiple views, and being outward projected versus inward is there's an inner sense of self, an inner sense of self-awareness, self-acceptance that isn't really being addressed when we're just rather habitually going through life. Mm-hmm. So this question starts to stir the pot. This question starts to make us say, who am I really? You know, How can I amalgamate all these pieces of me? And this is something that, that revealing more love will do naturally is that all of a sudden we'll start to find our, our own truth in relationship to all these things that we had been previously doing. We start to get more honest with ourselves, say, you know, I don't, I get, we get invited to something, we say, you know, I don't really feel like going. I just don't know why, but I'm gonna honor myself and not go. I'm not gonna make an excuse. I'm not gonna try to be somewhere I don't really wanna be because I think I'm supposed to be there. We don't, we, we go to that space where we begin to no longer act out of obligation, out of tradition, and we don't shrug it off, suppress it, or try to justify it by coming up, you know, excuses, little white lies. Um, we simply are honest. Now, this is a very different level of honesty because we're no longer complying to this outer world. We're beginning to say, wait a minute, you know, at this particular moment, I'm going to honor myself and you say not go to something. Which, interestingly enough, you know, I bring up in one of my books, the, an often uh, overlooked area is that when we honor ourselves we really do honor everybody else because in those moments where we say don't go to a particular event that we we thought we should go make an appearance you know keep friends happy with us whatever we actually create a space a different environment or a different context for other people to have experiences that wouldn't have happened had we been there plus we create new contexts of experiences for ourselves because we're not there this is that that kind of that middle space of where we begin to explore these multiple almost conflicting belief systems that you're talking about and it can be kind of muddy it can be kind of murky because we're still kind of attached to being in the world and yet we're beginning to question our relationship to the world which is why i like this third level of honesty the best because now when we move into this third level we're kind of saying okay how do i honestly 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 feel in other words, what's the question behind the question that's behind the question? And most people have a difficult time saying, what's the question behind the action? Most won't then go to another level saying, what's the question behind the question? Why am I really doing this? What's my real genuine intent? You know, am I trying to look good in the eyes of others? Am I trying to justify myself? I'm trying to make myself happy. I'm trying to make other people happy. You know, am I being true to myself? Am I really beating to my own drum? Am I really walking my path for me without concern about how other people perceive me? And that starts to open up a whole new level and layer of potential, again, greater unlimitedness. And in that, you know, we might still be doing all the same things. However, now we're becoming more real with ourselves and more in the present moment, coming from our heart saying, you know, and making choices, literally, that this is how I choose to create and experience life rather than be part of a life that I lose myself in, which is how, you know, most of us have operated. So now we're going to deeper and deeper levels, and these can be very core issues, you know. It can be very deep, you know, can be on religious levels, spiritual levels, um, you know, self-acceptance levels, tremendous self-acceptance levels. And that exploration begins to weed out even more of these conflicting energies. And what happens is we begin to, in this process of getting very genuine and very honest about ourselves, we become more real to ourselves and we really do come more from our heart. And the heart, from my experience, is always a far better guide than our mental constructs of how we relate to life. And the heart will often, you know, make a, a an artist become could become a business person because their heart really said that. 
And a business person might find in this third level of honesty that they've always wanted to be an artist. And that's where some, some people have certainly rebelled in that ultimate sense where they've become, you know, oftentimes geniuses, the ones that have gone so far beyond and said, this is possible. That's what that third level creates. Because when we're not busy conforming to what has been, we open ourselves up to the potential of what can be. And the heart will always be the greatest guide. And that's where we'll begin to find our true passion, our true sense, our true gifts, and really be able to, to bring forth what we came here to bring forth in the, in the purest essence. Doesn't make any of the others wrong. Doesn't mean that anybody that's not going to that third level is wrong. It just simply is levels of conscious awareness of self and being more real to ourselves and more real we are to ourselves, the more we are real and, and a more potent part of family, community, society at large. So does this mean that uh, becoming very totally honest with oneself uh, may mean that actually you discover that you're not such a good person after all uh, and you know you're not really on a spiritual path to be honest you know you'd much rather be driving around in a flashy car and you know living the material good life uh, as distinct from really penetrating to the heart of things and discovering that at heart, you are a very spiritual being, uh, and that there's a, you know, there's a heart of gold there, uh, and that that's really the true you, which presumably would be kind of more desirable, really, in anybody's eyes, especially your own. Uh, but does this, what you're saying, does it really mean, you know, be facing up to where you are in your own path? perhaps. And, uh, it's a yes and a yes. It's a yes yeah. in that we often find the more real we get, the more honest we are with ourselves, we start to realize that we aren't necessarily very happy with ourselves. We begin to realize that we have made lots of choices that were not necessarily coming from the more authentic self, the more real self, the more core self. And of course, that brings up you know an incredible great opportunity to forgive all those you know because in that sense those things that we could have perceived as as great choices at the time with the second level and third level of honesty might reveal themselves to have been perhaps mistakes or things that we could have done differently you know that creates a whole nother um, can of worms of, of relationship to experiences because what's honest you know, at the time, if that's where we came from, that's what we chose to do, we can detach and let go and forgive and release and allow that experience to have helped us understand a deeper level of honesty now, because we've got contrast. We can say, oh, well, you know, again, we, we've used this phrase, you know, had I known then what I know now? Well, mm -hmm. when we begin to explore ourselves, we begin to reveal all kinds of aspects of ourselves, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, things that we didn't necessarily, you know, we, we may not necessarily like of ourselves um, at this particular moment as we're going through this process, which is why, you know, unconditional love and letting, you know, self-accepting, accepting all these, amalgamating all these uh, various ways we have acted and reacted to life is part of this honesty process. And it is more of a process. This isn't like an overnight, oh, I'm honest, I'm dishonest. You know, really, there's this level of honesty isn't about judging. It's not about criticizing. It's about observing. And what we're talking about isn't about, did I do the moral compass thing, you know, whatever I think that is based on whatever my cultural religious structures are, you know, and they do differ, they do vary. This is not one thing that works universally because there's so many different rituals and traditions and beliefs running out there, suggestions, limitations, ways people, you know, view life and then they imply that limitation on someone else. Can we say that we come to a core authentic self that we think is spiritually good? or that is doing the right thing, we're back to that judgment place again. Who's to say what's right? If we are enjoying our lives with harm to none, it really doesn't matter what level of expression that comes in. If we're coming from an authentic self and we're utilizing resources to an end that benefits 
a greater whole, which is really how the heart works. It's interconnected and interdependent. It recognizes its relationship to the whole. Then judgment, which is that moral compass side of us, really begins to fade away because the more we come into our heart center, the more we become aware of ourselves, we become aware of all those around us as being like ourselves, the more we become genuine. And in that case, this type of almost transcendent level of honesty really isn't about the judgment of what's right or wrong, honest, dishonest. We're talking about something that's intrinsic, where we are living in each moment, exploring each moment, following inner promptings within each moment that are more heart-centered than they are from the mind or from the suggestions of others. So in this sense, we're, we're, as one goes into this greater and greater, deeper and deeper space, it really isn't about, you know, am I an authentic person that makes me wonderful? Uh, or am I out flying around in the material world? And does that make me not so wonderful or vice versa? You know, it's not about worrying or concerning ourselves. It's about being genuine with our heart and doing what we are prompted from within as a way to approach. And none of us can answer that for another person. It's impossible. We will never know that because of all the, all the things that lead up to that particular person's life stream and out of experience. What we're saying is in this discussion of the quality of honesty, we simply begin to ask what's honest for ourselves. And again, not from this external moral construct, but a deeper inner construct of who am I really? And the more we ask that question, who am I really? How do I really view life? This very practical sense of self comes forth because now we're actually taking a very kind of nebulous, unconditional love, a very nebulous sense of honesty. And we're saying very practically, oh, by, by experimentation, by evolution, by, by acknowledging and actually contemplating honesty, each moment provides opportunities, experiments, you know, to say, well, am I coming from my heart or am I not? And we will learn and grow with our own levels of honesty. And what happens is we begin to create as, as a tremendous gift. The more we become real to ourselves, the more we inspire those around us to begin to ask themselves the question, because we're all not beating to the same drum, trying to conform, trying to fit in. We're all recognizing that there's tremendous diversity and tremendous opportunity in that diversity. And that's the gift, not the conformity. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a very multidimensional, very deeply layered thing. And, and certainly not one that I would want to say, what is honesty? You know, because that's, it's a very personal, intimate journey. And as you've kind of alluded to, you know, as you yourself have gone through this journey, you've, re you've realized a lot of things about yourself, yet they're not singular and concrete, they actually evolve. Because once you realize that, oh, I don't necessarily know if I like that part of myself. Now that I realize that maybe I want to think I want to scurry back to the old way, it's like, no, accept that, amalgamate that, realize that we are and have been an amalgamation of lots of things, and yet there's still a deeper, truer self. And the more we go within, the more that deeper, truer self reveals itself. Mm. So the, the path then from honesty to uh, unconditional love, or why honesty is an aspect of, of uh, unconditional love, is, is that the more honesty there is, the more acceptance there is of self, which is a, which is a feature of unconditional love for oneself, isn't it? Uh, and the more, therefore, the heart opens, presumably, to oneself. And, and the beauty with all of these qualities of unconditional love, that which we do for ourselves, we simultaneously do for those around us. Because the more we recognize all these aspects of ourselves, and this is one of the, the, the more uh, amazing things, is that when I found more and more about myself, about why I act and react the way I do, the better I have come to understand myself, what pushes my buttons, what causes me to react, what causes me to to come from qualities that are always not necessarily always from love, the more I've been able to see myself in other people, the more I've been able to see other people act and react. And by having greater understanding for myself, greater compassion for myself, greater acceptance, it's been far easier to be more compassionate and less reactive with those around me when they're coming from those places, because I understand where they're coming from, because I've taken the time to understand where I come from. And those parts, again, are universal. They play out 
differently and uniquely by every individual. And yet there's this core theme that is universal and that there's a core honest level, a core genuine level, a core intimate level, a core unconditional level that has really just got layers of beliefs and rituals and, and you know, actions and reactions and, you know, experiences and time and, you know, all these myriad things layered upon it. And yet when we understand how we've gotten here, it's far easier to be compassionate when we look up, gaze upon people who are where we have been. Because now we understand, again, through the contrast of our own life, we understand where they are. And we realize it doesn't matter where they are. We're not here to change them.